Hi everyone. Today I want to share some insights uh, that I that I, I, I made while uh, going over um, a, a conversation on Haskell Cafe that came up this week. Um, uh, but an interesting part of, of GHC that you might stumble across when you're when you're least expecting it. And so I think it's it's good to to learn about. It's all about let generalization. Uh, so let's see what what do I mean by this. So so in in Haskell when we write a function. Uh, GHC automatically generalizes the type of that function, right? So the the easiest case, if I write something like this, um, and then I, I run that into GHCI, and then I ask, what is the type of that function? Well, here, oh, let's turn on fprint explicit for all, so we can really see the full the uh, uh, tf. Um, we can really see this the full type of that function. It says that that this function can take any type p, any a uh, value of any type p, back to the uh, to another value of of that same type p, and that works for any p, right? We're not going to say that f just works on ints or f just works on bools. It works for any type. Um, this is let generalization. It's called let generalization because um, it, this started when. Uh, you would write sort of let f x equals x in, um, and, and, and every binding would be preceded by let in, in languages like ML, uh, and Haskell has adopted it from there. Um, okay, so this is great. This, is, this allows polymorphism without ever writing a type signature. This is very, very powerful. Um, but there's a funny thing that happens in GHC when you have a binding like this that is local inside of a function. So let's get let's get rid of that that function here, and now let's just have g y equals, and then in here we're going to say let f x equals x in. Oh, I don't know. Um, how about f of x f true? Now, now first let's just think for a minute. Should this work? I claim yes, this should work unless I made a, I've made a typo here because we're going to see this fx equals x and say okay, so this will work for any type, so x can be of any type, and in particular it can be character or bool, um, and then there's this y over here, but that's unused, so maybe we'll get an unused variable warning, but but otherwise everything should be okay. So let's see what happens. So I compile this. Indeed, this compiles. Um, we're probably going to have a few other unused matches, so let's just disable un the unused matches warning. Um, okay, and then now I can see well, I can't ask GHCI what is the type of f here, but I can just confirm that g is well typed. We can ask for g, and it takes any type to, well, it's a tuple of car and bool, and that's because GHC is going to infer that f here has the type for all x, or for all p, p, r, o, p, um, and, and then accept it both at car, at car and at bool. All is well. Okay, um, let's try something else. What if instead of fx equals x, what if I do this? So now this is a bit funny in that I'm taking this y right here and I'm capturing it. F, this f function, it takes in x, but it actually returns something that's, it, that's defined both in terms of x and y. So this is something that we can do quite frequently in Haskell, and this is a good thing, and it allows us to, to create a function that sort of has some local information in it. This is all very well and good. And now if I compile, sure enough, everything still works. Let's see what the type of G is now. So now, um, uh, for inscrutable reasons inside the type checker, it's switched from P to B, but that's not really very important. It says that it's going to take in some value of type B, and it's going to return car paired with B, as well as bool paired with B. Um, and that's because we're going to infer here that the type of F is going to take any type to that type paired with B. And so here it specializes it so that type is car, and here it specializes it so that type is bool. Again, all is well and good. Um, let's decide now to, I don't know, write a type family. I'm not using unmaybe anywhere, I've just decided to write a type family in my module. And I compile, and then sure enough, we were told, oh, um, we can't do that. We have to enable the type families extension. Okay, fine. Let's just do what it says. And now we have an error saying G won't type check. So this is very, very strange. Uh, there's no interaction at all here between G and, and my type family. So wh why is this happening? So the reason that this is happening is that inside GHC, 
X type families implies another extension called monolocal binds. And monolocal binds says that some local definitions like this do not get generalized. Um, so it's documented in the manual. So let's jump over and take a look at the manual. So here, this is section 6.12.2 of the manual on let generalization. And it's talking about this, this extension, monolocal binds, which you've probably never heard of because no one ever writes monolocal binds in a file. The only time that people get it enabled generally, you can enable it, there's nothing sort of wrong with it, but, but most people don't, um, is because it is implied by type families. And I'll just, for completeness, also gadget implies monolocal binds. So those are the two ways that most people get it. And what it says here is that in local let definitions, um, we sometimes will not generalize. So, so here is the, is the full description of it. I'm not going to walk through this in, in great detail right now, but it is in the manual saying exactly when it's generalized. Um, but what it, what it says in brief is that if we have a variable like y here that's captured, in a function, it says, well, you know, now things have gotten complicated and GHC is going to say, no, 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 I'm not going to generalize. I don't know the best way of generalizing, so I'm just not even going to try. And so in this particular case, it says that uh, the first time when we see f here, well, x is going to have some type, but we don't know what, and we're not generalizing. So then later when we see that f is applied to a character, it says, okay, the type that f takes must be car. And then when we see that f is applied to bool, now that's a type error. And, and indeed, that's what we see down here. Um, so the problem with monolocal binds is that it is a bit oddly fragile. So let's get rid of my y here. Now my, fun, now, now my definition is just fine. And that's because monolocal binds only stops generalization if it gets sort of too confused. And that, and that detailed definition um, in, in, the, in the manual says what it means to be too, too confused. So uh, one thing, one ingredient that we need to get too confused is if we have to capture something uh, that, that was in scope sort of before the let. Um, so this Y qualifies. All right. The idea here, the idea behind, behind that part of the restriction is that this FX equals X, that could just be floated out. That doesn't need to be a local definition at all. And so because it doesn't need to be a local definition, it's, it's sort of behaving like a top level definition. And that means that it can still be generalized. Um, but once I mentioned the why here, well, now we're in trouble. Um, and so the point, the, the, the Haskell Cafe uh, thread was about a couple of corner cases. So let's, let's explore a few corner cases here. Um, so instead of having y as a parameter, what if y is just another local variable, right? And, and as we all know, of course, um, uh, numbers are overloaded. So this says we don't know exactly what type y is going to have here. Let's see, does this stop generalization? Ooh, it does stop generalization, right? Because uh, this y, we still don't know exactly what its type is. What if this is something a little bit more obvious? What if I say this? Is that good? Oh, no, that's good enough. Um, and so now, now this one is good enough. And, and we can see what's the type of G. Well, it's going to be car bool, right? That's, we've generalized this now. Um, and, and so F is applied to car, so that returns a car bool. And F is applied to bool, and that's a bool bool, because why, why is a bool here? OK, so that's interesting. So if I say 3, well, then no. Um, uh, but if I, if I say true, then yes. Well, things get a little bit more interesting. If I turn off the monomorphism restriction, oh, now we're OK again. Um, and why, why are we OK here? Well, it turns out that if we, uh, if we don't have the monomorphism, the, the, or rather, the monomorphism restriction is part of what stops this generalization uh, from happening. So, so that, that's part of the subtlety. The truth is, if you want to really see what's going on, you have to sort of read that definition and think about examples. There's, there's a lot in there. I don't want to get into the details of all of this. What I did want to explore is just the fact that this, 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 um, uh, this feature of monolocal binds, first off, is quite hidden. 
right? Because we've never written monolocal binds. Instead, I've written type families or get it. And so I wanted to expose that a little bit. And also to explain that it is a little bit more subtler than, than we might want it to be. So one possibility, one possible outcome of this conversation on Haskell Cafe is, should we actually simplify it? Maybe we want to simplify it so that whenever we have a definition like this, such that um, the, it captures a variable that's not defined here, we can't just float this fx out. Maybe we want this to stop generalization and make it a simpler rule than we have today. I don't know. We can explore that possibility. Anyway, I hope this has been illuminating. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.